I just want to say thank you for your prayers as we were away for a couple Amen. of weeks. Amen. Yes. That's another prayer. We were with our families uh, for one week, and then this Becky and I, my daughter, we went, we stayed longer and did some more sightseeing. But we saw a lot of God's handiwork, and we enjoyed it. We're so glad to be home. Amen. Okay, let's get our hymnals and turn to number 139.
Mark is in there. He's oh. listening on the radio. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mark. <laughs> We'll have a, a prayer for the offering this morning. Father, we are so blessed to be in your presence. Amen. Knowing that you're in our midst. Yes. Lord, we continue to lift up those on our prayer list. Lord, we continue to pray for our nation, Lord, that you will uplift us, Lord, to where we should be. Lord, thank you for the privilege to serve you with our tithes and offerings. Bless each one, Lord, today that gives. Be your brother Chad as he brings your message. This morning, Lord, anyone here needs to make a decision, whatever it may be, we just pray to have this opportunity to do it. We love you because you first loved us and you gave your all on Calvary and shed your blood for our sins. And we're grateful to your name we ask and pray. Amen.
earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. What God called me here below will be chapter 13. Amen. Amen. John chapter 13. You might as well stay up here, son. You're going to have to move that camera a little more than you usually have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just, you're going to have to bear with me a minute. John chapter 13. And we're going to cover a, quite a bit in this chapter, but I just, for a text this morning, I want to start in verse 16. So if you would, direct your attention to John chapter 13 and verse 16. You found that? Say amen. amen. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happier ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth, whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. And let us pray. O Lord God. As I stand here before you, Lord, I ask you for your help and your power. Lord, I always ask for your help to preach, but I especially need it this morning. Lord, I know what I am. You promised, Lord, 1 John 1, 9, that if we would confess our sins, you'd be faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. And Father, I want to make sure that before I attempt to preach this passage, that I'm clean before you. So Lord, I ask you, and I already have, but I ask you again, Please forgive me for the ways that I've failed you. Please give me your power this morning. Help me to preach your word. And Lord, help us all, myself included, to hear it and to apply it to our lives in a way that's well-pleasing to you. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, back up, please. We're still in John chapter 13. That's the only place we'll be this morning. But back up to verse 2. And I'll remind you, this is the night that Jesus is betrayed and arrested. But before those events occur, there's a meal. So verse 2 says, Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now, if you'll follow me with the camera, I will ask the children in my Sunday school class to please come forward. And for Brother Clark, you'll just have to forgive me. And I know there's others. There's, there's, there's a couple others I won't mention by name that do watch our uh, broadcast or do listen on the radio. And you won't be able to see this, but I'll try to describe it as it happens. So forgive me. If you would, all of you just sit right there in those choir chairs for a moment. Tristan, you're going to have to follow me with the camera and I'll include you in on this too. Okay. 
Now, I didn't prepare anybody for this. The only one that knew was Tristan, and that's because he helped me. I didn't tell anybody what's going on. I think half of you have guessed this already. That's okay. <coughs> I'm going to all this trouble for a reason. So, I'll try not to make a mess. For them that are listening on the radio, I am setting a chair out front, and I'm pouring water in a basin, and I'm going to attempt to illustrate what the Lord did for the disciples by washing the feet of these children. There's a reason I'm using children for this illustration. We found out at, I won't name the church, we found out at a particular church we tried this at, now some older people won't let you touch their feet, and you'll get a fight if you try. <laughs> we had a particular pastor. We thought it'd be neat to wash his feet just to show our, our service attitude, and he was having none of it. None of it. Some people are just weird about their feet. I'm hoping the children will be a little, a little more cooperative. So, uh, I'll be as quick as I can, forgive me, but I'm going to ask. You have the camera in this direction? I think so. Okay, that's fine. You can go first, you're the youngest. Come on. <laughs> now, when the Bible says that Jesus took off some of his clothes, it didn't mean he took off all of them. He took off his outer garments, as I have done, and he took him a towel and girded himself in a way that he could use the towel. That's what that passage means that I just read to you. And we'll get back to that in a minute. But what I want you to know is Jesus came here with the heart of a servant, willing to do whatever was necessary. You don't have to get ahead of me. Okay. Now go ahead. Now I know. I know you've had a bath because we made all you children bathe last night before you went to bed. We don't put dirty bodies in a clean bed, do we? But we're going to clean your feet. <laughs> I can already tell by the, the, the dirt in there from one kid, they need to clean it. So. All right. Sit down. You can go that way. Where? You're next. Come on. You know, I should have took classes on how to remove shoes before I attempted this. <laughs> Some of these are complicated. Are you ticklishing your feet? No. Mm. Not really. Good. Yes, she is. Well, we're not going to find out. I don't want to wear any of this. So. young to remember it. You guys get big enough to wash your own feet, I quit doing it. Alright, get back in there. Look at the water turn brown. I should have used two basins. Y'all aren't washing your feet very good, are you? There is a purpose to all of this. Please bear with me. It's the shoes, Mom said. Well, it doesn't matter, it's going to fit the illustration just fine. Turn that way. Take your shoes and go. You. Let's go. I see Boss Baby's over there hiding. I have nicknamed him Boss Baby. Yeah, Boss Baby. Because yeah. <laughs> he tried to take over my class and he's dressed like a Boss Baby. So. Anyway. No, he's a smart kid, though. He knew everything I was trying to teach before I could teach it. Wow, look at that water. All right. Have this foot. I'd hate to be the last child to get your feet washed in that dirty water. <laughs> well, it's still going to come out cleaner than they were. For sure. We're using soap. Good thing we did the basic first, not last. Right? Maybe get lost in the bathroom. I'm glad we didn't try this with adults. Can you imagine what we'd have to do to get everybody's feet cleaned? Now, 
I won't make you. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I won't make you. That will actually fit the illustration fine, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I know you're going to make me. I'm not going to make you. You either do it or you don't. No. Seriously? I'm scared. <laughs> you're not, you're not, let, let me hear you say you're not going to let me wash your feet, right? I'm not going to let you wash my feet. Gotcha. You not got today. Cool. <laughs> you're not the only one with that attitude, I promise. <laughs> Did you, did you want your done, brother? Hey, I think we've got a volunteer from the audience. Would you like your feet clean, sir? I'd be happy to kneel down and clean your feet for you. Very good. All right. Do we have anybody who wants to volunteer before I put it away? Hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not well enough to wash your feet. Want anyway. All right. Justin, if you would take that. Well, brother Gary already got it. Look at him go. can take this and put this away for me. Thank you. All right. No, I don't need a jacket, but it helps hold all this. All right. So, out of, what was it, five kids, three were willing to let me wash their feet, two were not. Let's continue our story. Looking back at verse 4, it says, He riseth from supper. He's a better man than me already after I eat. I don't want to do anything but sleep. Anyway. He laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter. You could almost write trust him in there, couldn't you? <laughs> Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Yeah. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Well, that's a common answer. When you're washing feet, you'll get some who flat say, No, never. You're not touching my feet. I've run into that a lot. So I understand this better. Peter said, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Mm. Verse 9, Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Amen. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Now, I want to be very clear what's going on here. See, my Bible teaches when you ask Jesus to save you, He cleanses you. In fact, First John 1, 9 says, if you're uh, faithful, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you ask God to save you, He saves you. He washes you. We sing a song to Him sometimes. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? The picture is of how He cleans us from head to toe, every bit. And I'll illustrate this. I hope we all bathe. I think we all do. But when we bathe, we get clean, right? I mean, I hope we all wash our own feet. Yes, we all clean ourselves. In that day, they would all wash themselves. But they traveled there with their own foot. So you can be 100% clean. If you go anywhere, your feet are going to get dirty. They wore sandals much like those girls had on this morning. What was it you said? It's the shoes making their feet dirty? I'm going to say there's some stuff that goes with the shoe that makes their foot dirty. But anyway, <clears throat> the picture is this. The Lord cleans us completely. But we have to walk in this old dirty world. We've got to travel around and we get dirt back on us. Now, do we lose our salvation? No. But as long as we walk around with that dirt on us, we lose our fellowship. Did you know even in that day, if you showed up to a meal nasty, they wouldn't let you participate. They were very clean people. You did, if you weren't willing to clean yourself, you didn't get to eat with them. You didn't get to fellowship with them. They'd let you sit outside and eat with a dog or something. That's the way they treated them. 
the Lord cleanses us when we ask Him to. We ask Him to save us. He cleans us entirely. But then we have to walk in this old wicked world. And we're going to get dirty. Every week we have an invitation. And every week I tell you, this is not just for getting saved. Look, I'd love it if we had somebody every week come forward and say, I want to know the Lord. I want to accept Him as my Savior. I want to be saved. But that's not all the invitation is for. Did you know the invitation is also to get our feet washed, so to speak? To get that dirt off of us that we collect and walking around out in the world all week. I don't know about you, but I have to live in this world and I do things I should not do. Say things I should not say. And I get dirty, y'all. Now, the picture of washing our feet is us praying and asking the Lord to clean us every day. I've had people ask me, well, if we're saved, why do we have to pray and ask Him to forgive us all the time? I thought we were forgiven. Well, we still sin. He's forgiven those sins. We get to go to heaven. We didn't lose our salvation, but we can't fellowship with a God when we're dirty and nasty and in our sin. We've got to have that cleaned off of us. The picture He's given us here is of our daily walk with Him. How we're to clean our feet. How we're to ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse ourselves. And try to walk clean. And when we get it on us, and we will, we've got to get it off. It shocks me every Sunday when I have an invitation and nobody comes and prays. Now I hope you're praying where you are because I can tell you, even if I'm the only one, I can tell you, i got some dirt on me. I think we all did. I think that water, looking at it after, and I wish I could have shown it to you a little better, I think we all of us, if we're being honest, if we were to be washed today, we'd find some dirt on us somewhere. I used to sell a machine called the Thermax. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. It's kind of like the rainbow vacuum cleaner. It works off water. It's one of the cleanest vacuum cleaners out there. But it's expensive, and I worked for a company selling the Thermax. I thought that was the neatest thing ever because it cleans the air and it filters it through the water and it's just a, a, a clean machine. I'd go into people's homes and I'd tell them, you've got to have this machine. Clean homes. I'm talking about homes you feel like you could eat off the floor. And when I'd come in with this machine, I'd show it to them, I'd tell them, you've got to have this machine. Your house is not as clean as you think it is. And they'd want me to illustrate that. And I'd put me a little white filter, white on purpose, <clears throat> behind that hose. When it went to picking up, it'd start picking up dirt. They didn't know it was there. They'd see that filter on that little white filter and say, that came out of my carpet. That came off my couch. i got to buy this machine. See, it was a way to sell it, I think, what it was. But you know, I've never gone in a home yet with a white glove and not gotten something on it. And I'm going to tell you, we're not talking about your salvation right this minute. I'm talking about your life. Are you clean? Have you washed today? If, I was, if, if there was a ceremonial washing today, would there be dirt come off in the water? Because every Sunday when we have an invitation, everybody in here ought to be asking the Lord, hey, cleanse me. Forgive me. I wish we had us an old-fashioned altar up here, a tear-stained altar like they used to have in the old days. And I wish people flocked to that thing every time they came in here. Before the service, middle of the service, after the service. I don't care if you've got burdens you need to let loose of. That's what that thing's for. And I guarantee you I do. I would lead by example if we had one and I'd kneel at it. But in the absence of an altar, you can kneel anywhere. You can kneel here, you can kneel there, anywhere in this building. This place was set aside, sanctified for the use of the Lord. It's not that this is the only place you can do it, but that's what this is here for. This is the house of God. We ought to treat it as such. We ought to come in here ready to cleanse ourselves, wash our feet, and get that stuff off of us. Simon Peter said, you're never going to wash my feet, Lord. Now, in, in fairness to Peter, that was, that was him looking at his Savior and saying, Lord, you ought not be washing my feet. It reminds me of Jesus when he went to get baptized. Remember what John said? John said, I can't baptize you. I have need to be baptized of you. Who am I to baptize you? And I understand that. I understand that point of view. I hope we all feel that way about our Savior. He had no business down on his knees washing their feet, but he did. I'm your pastor. I don't necessarily have any business down there on my knees washing people's feet, but I do. Because that's what the Lord told us to do. To be willing to wash one another's feet. We'll come back to that. My question for you this morning, are you washed? And if you're washed, are you clean? 
And if you're clean, are you washing anybody else? Let's look back at what happens. Peter says, never, Lord, never. You're going to wash my feet. And Jesus answered him and said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And Simon Peter said, well, if that's the case, if you're going to wash me, don't stop at my feet wash all of them. He says, my head and my hands. You know, that's a, that's a picture right there. A whole lot of our sin happens right up here. Right up here in this head area. Our eyes, our ears. What's that old, that old, what do they call that little thing my mama had in her kitchen with three little monkeys on it? See no evil, speak no evil. Yeah. What do we call that thing? Three little monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> that probably is what they call that thing. But anybody else ever seen that? See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? There's a whole lot of sin right here in his head. A whole lot of it in there in that mind. In the ways that we dishonor God with our mind. There's a whole lot of sin right here in these hands. You know Cain killed Abel with his bare hands? Killed him with his hands. There's a whole lot of wickedness goes on with them two hands. Right there. And there's a whole lot of wickedness goes on with them feet. Carrying you to and from what it is you're getting into. You ought not to be a doer. And you know what I'm talking about. You don't need me to spell it out. Hey, there's not too many preachers anymore that preach against sin, but you know Jesus preached against sin. Jesus taught holiness. Jesus taught getting cleansed. And we ought to, too. Simon Peter said, if you're going to wash me, Lord, wash all of me. Now, I like his attitude. What he's trying to say is, Lord, it ain't just my feet. All of me needs cleansed. And here's what Jesus told him, and this is important to learn. This proves what I was telling you earlier. Jesus says, He that is washed needeth not, needeth not, save to wash his feet. What well, Jesus says, if you're clean, then you're clean. Only thing you've dirtied up your feet. He says, I've cleansed you. These are believers. He said, I've cleansed you. And because you're clean, only thing dirty is your feet. And there's a symbol here. There's a picture here. If you've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're saved, okay? There's nothing you can add to it or take away from it. You're saved. If you've never been saved, I don't know what you're waiting for, but you're either are or you're not. You either belong to Him or you don't. He's either your Savior or He's not. It's that simple. But if you've ever accepted Christ as your Savior and you are saved, then you are clean. He cleansed you Himself. But even clean people walking around in this world get dirty. And you know what I mean when I say dirty. Nothing I hate worse after I'm clean and in bed and ready to go to sleep than for somebody to ask me to get up and do something. I don't want to get up and get dirty. I don't want to get stuff on my feet. I don't want to get nasty, man. I want to sleep in a nice, clean bed and I want to have a nice, clean body. We'll start over again tomorrow. But once I'm in bed, I want to get up. you remember some months ago, I taught a story out of uh, Song of Solomon about a young lady who didn't want to get up and answer the door. She didn't want to get dirty. You didn't hear that sermon. It's posted somewhere. But anyhow, that's that's kind of the way that people are. Once they're clean, they don't want to get dirty. I, I can't stand to go have my car washed. I'm talking about armor all clean. Nice. And then have to go anywhere in it and get it dirty. Yeah. You feel like, man, I just got that thing clean. I don't want to move it. It just needs to sit there, right? But inevitably, you're going to move that thing. It's going to get dirty. This old body's going to get dirty. The soul still clean. The soul body is going to get dirty. And Jesus said, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. When he says you are clean, but not all, he said, not all of you belong to me. That's what that means. Every one of those disciples except one was saved. Every one of those disciples except one belonged to him. One of them was a pretender. One of them never meant it. He went through the motions. He went through the actions. You know those people that are fool you? There's people you think, man, they're Christian. I've seen them in church. They claim to know Jesus. Man, I, I, I know they're saved. And you find out, well, you, you may find out someday they're not. And only them and Jesus know. I can't look at you and tell you if you're saved. I can't look at you and tell you if you know the Lord or not. I don't know. Only you and my Savior know. But I know Jesus knew that one of them was not. And He says, you are clean, but not all. Verse 11, For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he, and by the way, he didn't exclude Judas from this. Judas had one last opportunity here.
to accept Jesus. You can't feel too sorry for Judas. Judas had every opportunity. Judas had a better opportunity than any Christian I know because he saw the Savior face to face. He saw the multitude fed. He saw the sick healed. He even saw the dead raised to life. You know, he was there when Lazarus came out of the grave. Judas had every opportunity and the night he betrays our Savior, he got his feet washed by Jesus. There are some people walking around pretending to know the Lord who get their feet washed right along with the Christians, but they never accepted Him as their Savior. Never got saved in here. I know people who have a head knowledge of Christ, but they've never let that head knowledge sink 18 inches to the heart. And a head knowledge won't carry you to heaven. You can know all about Jesus, but if you don't know Him, you're not saved. If anybody had a chance, Judas had a chance. And when Jesus washed their feet, look at verse 12. So after He had washed their feet and had taken His garments and was set down again, He said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. This is where it gets real. Remember I told you, first of all, you need to be washed. Don't be like Judas. You need to be saved. If you're in here this morning and you are not saved, please, for the love of Almighty God, please accept Jesus as your Savior. It's really that simple. He paid the price. He died for you. You just have to accept it. It's that simple. But once you've done that, you've got to continue to keep your feet clean. Amen. And after you know you're saved, you've been washed. After you're keeping your feet clean and trying to walk holy with Him, following after Him, now He tells us to wash each other. Now this is where it hits home. I know people who are fine with coming to Christ. Who are fine with washing their feet every day. When it comes to washing somebody else's, oh, I draw the line right there. I know people who just flat refuse to be willing to wash each other's feet. Now, I'm not talking about physically grabbing somebody and pulling her shoes off and washing her feet. Y'all know that, right? I'm not asking you to do that. But you do something very similar. You love one another enough to. I don't want anybody to pull my boots off because I have extremely stinky feet. My wife can attest to that. <laughs> Brother Gary and I went last year, I think it was last year, year before, we went to uh, a, a convention meeting uh, in, in Houston uh, at the Second Baptist Church there in Houston. We went to the, the convention and we had a good time. But I was so worried because they put us in a room together and there's two beds in there. And I told my wife, I said, my feet will clear a room. He's not ever going to want to bunk with me again. Not ever. I'm talking about, I got stinky feet, y'all. I'm not asking anybody to come along and wash my feet. I'm not. What I want you to do is love me enough to be willing to. I'll never ask you to pull my boot off and wash my feet. But I'd like to know that if I needed you to, you would. And I'd like to know that you'd do it for each other. Help each other stay holy. There's nothing worse than a Christian who will wag his finger at somebody else. I heard it put this way. There was a guy one time, he said, well, I'd join you all over at that Baptist church, but it's full of hypocrites. Another fellow said, no, actually, we've got room for one more. <laughs> I've heard it put that way, but here's the problem. We're not supposed to be like that. We're not supposed to be wagging our finger in somebody's face. We're not supposed to be pointing out somebody else's sin. What we're supposed to do is try to help each other clean that sin up. Not my job to judge you. My job is to help you. My job is to serve you. That's what Jesus came. He was the example. That's what He did. He says, Know you what I've done to you. You call me Master and Lord. You say, Well, for so I am. I am your Master and Lord. If I then, your Lord and your Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Are we washing feet? That's my question. Are we? For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Now I went to great lengths to make the same example in front of you this morning that Jesus made in front of him. The example is no less true today than it was then. He says, I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, and we're going to close with these verses. This is where we started. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. When the Lord calls somebody like he's called me to preach, I am no greater than he is. And you're no greater than I am. We all ought to love one another and be willing to wash one another, teach one another, help one another, grow one another, appreciate one another. This church has been good about that for the most part. 
But the only way we're going to stay good about it is we continue to do it and pay attention to it. It says, if you know these things, happier ye if you do them. It's not enough to know something. The Lord wants you to do something. The Lord wants us to be busy. To get out. It didn't call us to come sit on a pew, sing, uh, sit on our blessed assurance, sing just as I am and leave just like we came. No, He called us to do some stuff. And as a church, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of cleaning to do. On each other, but mostly on ourselves. He says, I say unto you, the servant's not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happier you if you do them. I speak not of you all. He knew about Judas. He said, I know whom I have chosen. But that the Scripture may be fulfilled, he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. That Scripture was talking about Judas. Hey, if you're that person, get saved. Don't be that person. I don't know that there's one in here, but I have to tell you, if you're that person, you don't truly know the Lord and you don't truly want the Lord, I wish you'd change that. He says, verse 19, I tell you before it come, that when it has come to pass, you may believe that I am He. He told him before any of it happened, that somebody was going to betray him. And he did. And I'll close at verse 20. Very, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Here's what he's saying. If you know I sent Him, accept it. If you believe, and I hope you do, but I don't know, I can't see your hearts. If you believe God put me here to give you a message, then by receiving that message, you're receiving Christ. And by receiving Christ, you're receiving God. That's what He's saying. When the Lord gives us a message, we're supposed to hear it, receive it, and apply it. If I'm not speaking by the power of Almighty God, I, I don't deserve I don't. I don't need to be here. But if I am, how come people don't respond? If I am, how come we don't do what He's telling us to do? If I'm truly God's man, why won't you receive what I'm telling you? And if I'm not, i got no business being here. It's, it's really that simple. Verily I say unto you, He that receiveth, whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Let's make sure all of us, myself included, is hearing that Jesus is trying to tell us today. And that we're applying. And that we're honoring Him with. I hope everybody in here is saved. I really do. But I just don't know. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. I'm going to ask you to consider this. <laughs> if you know Jesus as your Savior, I'm not going to talk you out of it. I believe you. If you truly know Him as your Savior, praise God He's your Savior. 